Okay, so now we're going to continue with dative bond. Uh, just now we can see that from the structure of the nitrate, yeah, you can see from the structure of nitrate just now, um, where nitrogen is double bond oxygen, you have a single bond oxygen, and you see this arrow in the oxygen here. What is this arrow represent? So this arrow is actually drawn. Uh, this arrow actually is called as a dative bond. Uh, dative bond is also known as a coordinative bond, where a dative bond is defined as a covalent bond in which one of the atoms donate the lone pair electrons available. Uh, although the properties of a coordinative bonds uh, do not differ from those of normal covalent bond because all electrons are alike no matter what their sources is. So uh, here are the few applications of dative bond. So dative bond, dative bond is usually applied for this field circumstance. First, uh, first application of dative bond is to assist atom or molecule ions that are not yet achieved of that configurations. So making use of atoms which has a lone pair electrons to this to those who are lack of no electron pair. So for example, sulfur dioxide. So for sulfur dioxide, one of the electrons is um, one of the lone pair electrons is that the sulfur is donated to the oxygen in order to help the oxygen to achieve octet. So if you look carefully on the oxygen, so oxygen have two, four, six, eight. This oxygen have two, four, six, eight, and sulfur at the same time also have two, four, six, eight. So in, in this case, even though a lone pair electron is donated to the oxygen, sulfur does not lose its electron pair. Instead, it's just share the electrons pair with another atoms. So you can see in here, sulfur still remain octet even though it has formed a covalent bond. So if there is an extra electron pair in here, you can see that in sulfur trioxide, another dative bond is also formed in between the S and O. So you can see in here, uh, electron pair will make the oxygen also to become octet, two, four, six, and eight. Other than that, it is also used in carbon monoxide to, to help the carbon to achieve octet arrangement where one of the lone pair electron from the oxygen is donated to the carbon so that is why the arrow is from O to the C. So by doing this, carbons are able to achieve octet by 2, 4, 6, 8, oxygen also 2, 4, 6, 8. So eventually they form a triple bonds in here. Another example is ozone molecule. So ozone molecule very similar to sulfur dioxide. So it also donates an electron pair to the oxygen in order to make sure all oxygen has eight electron. Whereas sometimes, uh, in order for the hydrogen ions to uh, exist on its own, so when dissolved in water, one of the lone pair electrons inside the oxygen has been donated to the hydrogen ion in here. So it is donated to the hydrogen ions in here. You can see that you eventually form two, four, six, eight, where hydrogen atoms achieve a duplex arrangement. Now, same goes with the formation of ammonium ion. So in the formation of ammonium ion, ammonia donates the electron pair from the nitrogen to the hydrogen ion in order to form what you call as an ammonium ion. So this ammonium ion is very common uh, in our laboratory. Now, uh, not only that covalent bond can be used to assist ion, it can also sometimes help some electron division compound, for example, boron trifluoride. So boron trifluoride, as we say, if we see just now, uh, it is one of the electron division compound with six electrons. However, making use of the lone pair electrons from the ammonia, it enables to donate the electron pair to the boron, forming a complex of NH3BF3. So by doing so, boron has it can also achieve octet by this circumstance and makes this complex become stable. So here we go. This is the first applications of dative bond. Second, second applications of dative bond is the formation of dimer. So now, in order for some compound which have incomplete octet to achieve stability, they tend to form dimer or po even polymer using dative bond. So two of the most common examples are aluminum trichloride and barium dichloride. So, as we discussed just now, this is the monomer of aluminum chloride. However, naturally, um, aluminum chloride exists as an Al2Cl6 solid. So, this is how Al2Cl6 solid looks like. So, by making use by, of one of the lone pair electron of chlorine, it is able to form a dative bond to the aluminum, while the other chlorine electron pair inside the chlorine form a dative bond to another aluminum chloride molecule. So, by doing so, if you not carefully, aluminum can have uh, octet arrangement of 2, 4, 6, 8. So this one also 2, 4, 6, 8. So you can see that both has achieved a, a octet arrangement and that is why they are stable under room condition. So under room condition, aluminum chloride exists as Al2Cl6. You're only able to form a monomer of aluminum chloride when you heat it strongly uh, under a high heat, then you form a monomer of AlCl3. 
Now, not only the aluminum chloride AlCl3 can do that, a beryllium chloride can also do the same thing. So for beryllium chloride, so this is how BeCl2 looks like. So the dimer, by making use of the lone pair electrons, are able to donate the electron pair to the beryllium respectively. So you can see in here, native bond is built in between Cl and beryllium here, Cl and beryllium here, yeah? And for your information, uh, barium chloride can also exist in the form of polymer where both of the chlorine donates the electron pair to the beryllium in order to help the beryllium in here achieve octet. So in here you can see a beryllium now has uh, 8 electrons. So this is possible as the polymer it helps to achieve the stability for the beryllium chloride forms. So these applications of native bond number 2, the formations of dimer and even polymer. Last but not least, native bond is one of the most common bond in the formation of complex ions or coordination compounds. So what is a coordination compound? A coordination compound are substances that contain at least one complex ion, a species, a species consist, consisting of a central metal ion, uh, as either a transition metal or being group metal, that is bonded to the molecule or an ion called as ligand via native bond. So that is why it ha also have another name called as coordination bond, because a coordination bond, a native bond is also formed in between between the center metal ion and the ligand. So for example, if you have hex hexa aqua copper 2 ion, so this is how hexa aqua copper 2 ion looks like. So oxygen making use of the lone pair electrons present in it are able to form a dative bonds to copper. So copper is able to help in a hex a octagonal structure. So this is how CuH2O6 2 plus looks like. Then you have a tetraamine nickel 2 ion. So this is how tetraamine nickel 2 ions looks like. And then we also have this uh, hexacyanophorate 3 ions. So this is hexacyanophorate 3. And last but not least, you can even have a trioxalato cobaltate 3 ions. So this is how the structure looks like. So all these structures are called as a complex ions. Yeah? Okay, and making use of the uh, dative bond, uh, these complex are possible to exist. So there you go, all about the coordination compound. So we'll continue next on the hybridization compound. Thank you.